good morning today we are continuing with the new lesson physiology and sports in this chapter we will study about gender differences in physical and physiological parameter physiological factors determining the components of physical fitness effect of exercise on cardiovascular system effect of exercise on respiratory system effect of exercise on muscular system physiological changes due to aging and the role of activity to maintain functional fitness in aged population so first this chapter physiology and sports we should know about the physiology what is the physiology physiology is the functioning of the organs and the systems of the body is known as physiology whatever the mechanism of function of our body organs and our body systems is known as a physiology and these systems the organ systems are known as physiological systems like digestive system respiratory system excretory system circulatory system nervous system etc so these are the physiological systems and this is the physiology so functioning of the organs and the systems of body is known as physiology so first topic we will go so the topic is gender differences in physical and physiological parameter so what is the difference between the gender gender differences we must know physical parameter and physiological parameter first we will see the physical differences major physical differences related to appearance in men and women body structure so male and female both height we will see male gain height up to 20 to 22 years and males are taller than females mostly females gain height up to 18 to 20 years another difference we can see then weight males are heavier heavy body weight because of the musculature and the density of the bones also so males are heavier than females males have shorter trunk long legs so cg is high center of gravity center of gravity it is it helps us to make proper balance and grip over the any surface so males have shorter trunk and upper body part and long legs so center of gravity is high females have shorter limbs arm or leg upper body is large so center of gravity is low joints are larger in males and skeleton is more rigid because of greater bone density so males have greater bone density 
so that's why the joints are larger and sculpture is more rigid females the joints are smaller than the males and sculpture is not highly rigid because of the low density of the bone and ossification of bone starts earlier means ossification is the process in which the bone repairs itself bone get repair itself there is no, nothing is needed no medicine nothing else bone gets repair itself so ossification takes place when the bone density is low because bones are weak so then the ossification takes place time to time the bone get repair ossification is the one example i can give you like whenever there is the fracture in bone so we are joining the bones together we are just fixing the bone it's at original place and the doctor applied the plast from outside to fix it so the bone join itself that is known as ossification no any medicine is applied over it for healing process so bone is getting repair itself so that is known as ossification so ossification bone of bones starts earlier because of low bone density bones are weaker then male broad and strong shoulders in male narrow and narrow shoulders and weaker in strength then male in female narrow shoulders are there and they are weaker in strength comparatively to men or males this was about the gender difference physically in physical structure the gender differences in male and female physiological differences physiological parameter we can see what is the difference of gender differences cardiovascular system we will see the male and female size of heart in male the heart size is larger and better blood circulation and slow pulse rates so because of the larger size of the heart the blood is circulated more and pulse rate are slow and in female the heart is smaller in size and pulse rate that's why the pulse rates are faster because a smaller heart is supplying the fulfilling the demand of the blood by different parts of the body so that's why pulse rates are faster whenever the heart is small so pulse rate will be higher stroke volume stroke volume is that is the amount of blood pump out by the heart in one heart beat so definitely when the heart is larger in size in males so stroke volume will be more so stroke volume is more in males and stroke volume is less in females because stroke volume is the amount of blood pump out by the heart in one heartbeat blood pressure in males both systolic and diastolic blood pressures is more and females both the blood pressures are less than the males so systolic and diastolic blood pressure upper and lower blood pressure these are the blood pressures are there we will study afterward that blood pressure when the pressure of the blood when the it is pump out systolic blood pressure is when blood is being pump out by the heart 
the systolic blood pressure is when blood heart is receiving the blood so this is the blood pressure oxygen carrying capacity in males more rbc count and hemoglobin is there so that's why oxygen carrying capacity is higher more rbcs are there and more hemoglobin in the males so that's why they have oxygen carrying capacity is higher because oxygen is carried by the hemoglobin in the form of oxyhemoglobin to the different parts of the body oxygen carrying capacity in female is less than male because less rbc counts and less hemoglobin females have less hemoglobin because of the physiological systems during the menstrual cycle monthly there is blood loss so various reasons are there by which the less obc counts and hemoglobin in female so these are the physiological parameter in the cardiovascular system we can see in respiratory system what is the gender difference respiratory system the male and female tidal volume more in males tidal volume is the amount of air in during normal breathing so more tidal volume is there and tidal volume is less in females this is also because of the slightly the size of lungs also differ in male and female so amount of air inhaled during normal breathing means tidal volume which is more in males and less in females vital capacity vital capacity is the amount of air one can inhale after forceful exhalation means this is for forceful inhalation and forceful exhalation in a single breath then this is known as vital capacity which is more in males and less in females so tidal volume and vital capacity is more in males and less in females residual volumes residual volumes means the amount of air still remaining in the lungs after exp expiratory reserve volume exhaled always because we can understand it whenever we are inhaling the oxygen of the air reaches to our lungs and then heart is sending the blood to the lungs for oxygenation in the same time and oxygen is mixed with the hemoglobin in the form of oxyhemoglobin and then carbon dioxide is diffused by the blood in the lungs for exhalation means in the lungs the oxygen which we have inhaled will be mixed with the blood and carbon dioxide is taken or that will be diffused in the lungs for exhalation this process takes place in the lung each time the heart is sending the blood to the lungs it will be oxygenated but in normal condition we are inhaling or the breathing rates are 20 to 25 but the heart is sending the blood to the lungs 72 times normally 72 beats per minute so 72 times but inhalation is there inhalation and exhalation is only 20 to 25 time but what is the gap between so for that gap the oxygen remains in our lung for mixing with the blood when we are not inhaling in that gap because 25 breathing rates and 72 
heart rates are there. So for that gap, we have some amount of oxygen remains in our lung for further mixing of the oxygen to the blood. So that is known as residual volume. It is expiratory residual volume and inspiratory residual volume. Uh, residual volume. So this is more in male and lower in female because of lower lungs capacity. So residual volume is clear. It is more in males and lower in females. Another physiological difference we can see in case of muscular difference. More muscles power due to large muscle structure in males. In females, so they have less muscle power than male due to small muscle structure because these muscle groups are not larger. Biological changes in the males are not noticed oftenly as females because female there are lot of biological changes are there during puberty biological changes happen like release of ovium menstrual cycle pregnancy so a lot of biological changes are there in female physiology but male physiology there are no such type of biological changes can be noticed biological changes means that is which are the ch biological changes a woman face a female face the biological changes in her life like pregnancy menstrual cycle so a lot of changes arises in the body menopause so since puberty the changes are there but in males this type of biological changes are not seen reaction time is better in males males are highly reactive towards the stimulus but females the reaction ability is slower than the male metabolic rates metabolic difference metabolism that is metabolism is the breaking down of the nutrients the food which we have taken the nutritive value from the food that undergoes the metabolism in which it is it means this is the digestion of the nutrients cellular digestion is known as metabolism so metabolic differences pmr basic metabolic rate better in males and basic metabolic rate is lower in female it is basic metabolic rate in male often it is normally 3000 kilocalorie and basic metabolic rate is 2400 kilocalorie because this is the calorie which is produced during the metabolism that is the oxidation of the glucose so this is male and female we can see different so physiological differences are there in which we have seen muscular biological and reaction time and about the metabolism so various physical in physical parameter we have discussed the gender differences and physiological parameter we have seen the gender differences males have the muscular body heavy muscular body and the female in this diagram you can see
we will see the components of physical fitness there are five components of physical fitness strength speed endurance flexibility and coordinative ability these we have studied in class 11 also the components of physical fitness in detail we have studied in class 11 and we will repeat it in the chapter training in sports also here we have to see what is the effect of exercises in the components of physical fitness and what is the physiological aspect so physiological factor which decide the strength we will discuss here the physiological factors determining strength so first is muscle size strength of the muscle depend on the size of the muscles force produced by the same size of muscle in male and female is approximately same the force produced by same size of muscle in males and female is approximately same can be improved through training this can be improved through the training we can increase the size of muscles so size of muscle also decide the strength because as we know muscles always work in a group one muscle cannot work alone there is the group of muscle which is work which work and which is known for specific work and some of the works are executed by different groups of the muscles one any work like we are lifting the any weight by your hand so the biceps triceps these muscles are working together to perform the action so muscles are always working in a group and the size of the muscles decide about the strength big muscle size will have the larger strength small muscle size will have the smaller strength lower strength body weight individual who are heavier are stronger than the light weight individual because most of the activity most of the sports activities the body weight and the strength work in same direction so that improve the strength of the individual so body weight is another physiological factor which decides about the strength of individual individual who are heavier or stronger than the light weight individual muscle composition muscular system is composed of white muscles and red muscle fibers and the percentage of these muscles gen, uh, genetically determined and cannot be changed through training so white muscles and for fiber and red muscle fibers so these are the muscle fibers they are known for their contraction speed white muscle fibers are contract fast so they are known as fast twisted muscle fiber red muscle fibers they contract slowly so they are known as slow twist muscle fibers so that's why these muscle fibers are genetically by exercise and any training we cannot change the percentage of and the number of these muscle fibers in our body these muscle fibers are genetically in our body so they are genetically composed so muscle composition also decides the strength so white muscle fibers which are contracting quickly red muscle fibers which contract slowly so both are required for the strength but white muscle fibers larger in number produce good strength nerve impulse 
speed of nerve impulse nerve impulse means that is how the nerve send message and receive the messages the speed of nerve imp nerve impulse determines strength cannot be improved through training nerve impulse is also naturally natural in our body it is since birth and through the development age so nerve impulses are there how because each in our body there is a network of nerves is there so these nerves are receiving message from the brain and sending message to the brain so that impulse that sending the message and receiving the message if it is quicker so definitely the strength will be good because whenever the muscles are applying force or applying strength the message comes through the brain so nerve impulse bring the message so that should be very quick for improving the strength so this is the nerve impulse then we will discuss about the physiological factors determining speed this we have discussed the physiological factors determining strength four factors we have discussed muscle size body weight muscle composition and nerve impulse